Hello everyone, and welcome back to another adventure in electronics, robotics, and communication systems. By now, chatbots and natural language processing have taken the internet by storm, and even programmers are using these tools to generate source code out of just a few basic instructions. One of these by OpenAI needs no introduction at this point, but if you haven't seen my previous videos, you can check the link in the description to get the basics and understand some of their pros and cons. But tonight we're doing something different, and I'm going to be using ChatGPT to program an Arduino single board computer. The Leonardo model is a good starting point. It even uses the same Atmega 32U4, which is the microcontroller on my recent PCB build. We're going to do this in three basic steps. One, give it an assignment in plain English. Two, inspect the code for anything unusual. And three, test the code on the actual hardware. First, this chatbot is prone to making mistakes, and you should not use it for planning or final decision making. Secondly, like most digital devices, the Leonardo board is vulnerable to static shocks, and even if you don't feel yourself shocking the board, you are better off grounding yourself. I've covered this before, and you can also find those links in the video description. I am going to start off by asking ChatGPT to write up a program that will blink the onboard LED, but I want it to avoid using the delay function. This should be easy to manage, and in fact the Arduino software includes a simple example on how to do this, but I want to see what the model comes up with. After seeing the code it produced, it became clear that I forgot to specify exactly what should trigger the LED to change. My intention was to have the microcontroller use one of its timer counters, but the code here appears to set up some type of a hardware interrupt, where changing an input pin from 0 to 1 or vice versa would be the signal that triggers the interrupt. So I'm going to revise my request by being a little bit more specific, so we'll see what it comes up with. This new response wasn't the coding style I was expecting, because it doesn't use any of the beginner-friendly functions of the Arduino platform, and this looks more like code intended for direct use by the AVR GCC compiler. But that compiler is also part of this program's toolchain, and from what I can see on the screen, it should be able to work. For this program, I did eventually speed up the blink rate, mainly to make sure I wasn't loading up that original example program, which would have flashed the LED at the same rate as this one. The second challenge was to set up the Arduino as a virtual keyboard. The Atmega 32U4 has its own internal USB controller. Arduino has an open source header file simply titled Keyboard, and it allows this chip to act as a virtual keyboard, which is automatically recognized by Windows drivers. I'm going to ask ChatGPT if it can make a new program for this, and giving as little information as possible, I have only told it that I want it to use the Leonardo as a keyboard, and if possible, type out the message H-E-L-L-O. Not only did it do this on the first try, but it also reminded me to install the keyboard library, which I hadn't done yet. Finally, the third challenge was to program the Leonardo as both an analog input and a virtual mouse. If it can do the keyboard challenge, it should be able to do this, although because I'm now using two peripherals, which are the analog to digital converter and the USB controller, I was a little bit more specific about how I wanted this done. The program should read in the analog input, and this generally means it will be stored in RAM as a unsigned 10-bit integer. I want this value stored in a variable titled xVelocity, and xVelocity should control the movement of the cursor. And of course, then it was on to testing. If you find this sort of thing useful so far, be sure to like and share the video. The numbers from YouTube indicate that most viewers are not subscribed yet, and I can imagine the case is similar for Minds and Odyssey.com. These videos and the equipment, like the Arduino, are made possible thanks to my affiliates, such as TorGuard VPN. TorGuard is the virtual private network I use to protect my privacy and online traffic, especially if I have to travel and I need to connect to an unsecured wireless network. The client works in both Windows and Linux, and by following the link in the video description, you can help this blog and yourself at the same time by signing up for private VPN, business VPN, private email, and physical VPN routers. Thank you once again, and with that, on to the test phase. So I have loaded up the Arduino IDE, I have plugged in the USB cable, and connected that cable to the Leonardo. The code generated by ChatGPT is in place, and in spite of that weird syntax, that original code both compiled, and it even worked as expected. The blink frequency might be a little bit off, and I'll probably need a scope to measure it, 
but just giving it a basic cursory glance, this seems very close to what I was asking for. The references to exact registers, like TCCR1, and the output compare register are a bit of an odd choice, but it's technically correct. It's what I would have done in a program like Atmel Studio, and the only real disadvantage is that it's not very beginner friendly, and I was hoping for something a little bit closer to that built-in example. The second example of using the Leonardo as a keyboard, well, it worked almost without a hitch. It was pretty close, but when I plug this into Windows and move the cursor into a word processor, we can see the word hello, but one of the L's is missing. It's impossible to tell exactly which L was missing, so I went back into the code and changed the sequence to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oddly enough, this time it worked perfectly. When I reread the source code and the online documentation, I realized that the code was pressing these keys, but it didn't release any keys until after the sequence is over. So the missing key press glitch was easily solved by simply inserting a release and then delaying for a few milliseconds like it normally would. So I would say that's two out of three in favor of ChatGPT. The third and final challenge was made to be the most difficult. The analog value read in from the pin is going to be a 10-bit unsigned integer. I didn't specify the data type that I wanted for my x velocity variable because I wanted to test if the chatbot could make an educated guess. The mouse cursor function, which is part of Arduino's mouse library, is designed to accept 8-bit signed integers. Technically, the documentation says these are characters, but as far as the hardware and the RAM are concerned, this function just wants a collection of 8 bits, and at a minimum, 2 bits from x velocity need to be discarded. In bitwise operations, we can do this by shifting the bit right by two positions, and in the instruction set, this is indistinguishable from dividing by four. I think the chatbot might have been a little bit overzealous, because instead of dividing by four, it divided by 512, which is a shift by nine positions. But one of the 10 bits is still left, so I'll allow it, and it doesn't seem to contradict what I requested. When I plugged this into the USB of my computer, the cursor didn't move at all, but when I modified the code to shift fewer bits, the mouse cursor moved as expected. So that is actually 3 out of 3 in favor of ChatGPT. Pretty wild stuff. You might be here for another platform, such as RISC-V, Raspberry Pi, Arduino Pro, or the PinePhone. So if you'd like to see this done on other hardware, be sure to let me know in the comments, and I'll see what I can do. Starting this week, I will also share other questions I've been asking ChatGPT to the Unboxing Tomorrow Patreon page and buymeacoffee.com. Like normal, you can get these videos early on the platforms minds.com and odyssey.com video, and you can get the full text version of this video on the unboxing Dash Tomorrow website. Stay posted for the next one, and as always, have a great day.